Welcome to r slash today I effed up, where OP exposes himself to his best friend's girlfriend. Today I effed up by accidentally spooning with my boss. So this happened about six years ago, but a little piece of me died that day and I cringe every time I think about it, so here it goes. So I, a 27 year old male, work construction. I'm comfortable with my sexuality, but the trade is inherently very macho and homophobic. So anyways, I've been looking for work for about half a year and finally landed a job with a local contractor. We seemed to get along fairly well, so I was looking forward to working for him. Well, me being fresh out of trade school, I was naive and had a toolbox chock full of gimmicky tools and apparatuses that were supposed to make my life easier. But any veteran tradesman would know is absolutely useless junk. One such example, my tool belt had new and improved hammer loops, which was a partial loop with two little spring-loaded arms. They looked like pinball handles. So you could just slap the hammer into the loop instead of sliding it in from the top. So amazing. I show up for my first day decked out in my future age carpentry gadgets and about 20 pounds of clothes because it was the dead of winter. After exchanging pleasantries with my new crew, I was shown where I'd be working. 30 feet up on a narrow scaffold plank with my new boss. No biggie. So him and I scale the scaffold and begin working. At some point, my boss needs to get on the other side of me, so I scoot to the edge of the plank and he starts sliding behind me. Click. The front of his belt promptly gets lodged into my effing hammer holder. Like I said, we were wearing lots of clothes, so it took a minute to see why we were being stuck butt to balls. And we embarrassingly chuckled before trying to free ourselves. My hammer was in the loop already, so with his part of the belt in there as well, there wasn't enough room for the little arms to fold back and release me from my nightmare. <laughs> for about 15 minutes, we shared that intimate moment on that scaffold before another <laughs> before another coworker came around the corner. After asking what the flip we were doing, he proceeded to take a, <laughs> a wedding's worth of pictures of us while laughing hysterically. I'd had enough. I took my pliers and ripped off the arms of the hammer holder. Free at last, we worked the rest of the day in silence. I promptly went home <laughs> and threw my belt into my wood boiler. If you ever want to break the ice with a new employer, just force them to spoon you on your first day. Edit, it was extremely cold out and the suspenders attached to my belt were under about three layers of clothes. The only way to take my belt off was to undress, attached to my boss on top of a 30 foot scaffold. Not happening. It may not have been 15 minutes. I didn't get out my stopwatch, but it sure as hell felt longer than that. Then we had this contribution from Grimfan in the comments. Great story. This reminds me of the time I saw my wife or so I thought, at our gym. I walked up behind her and gave her a nice pelvic thrust. Oh lord, it wasn't my wife, but another woman that looked just like her from behind. Very awkward. And then the red cucks are coming replies to that. I gave a lady a very enthusiastic double butt slap at the bar one night. The person I thought it was wouldn't have minded it and thought it was funny. The person it actually was didn't laugh and almost tried to kick my butt and the state I was in, I probably wouldn't have been able to stop her. The worst thing was, two of my friends saw this from a short distance. Me seeing the butt, me warming my hands up for the double butt slap and my final approach, and they said nothing, but just looked on, waiting for the show. Today I effed up by forgetting I was having groceries delivered and consequently traumatizing the delivery driver. So this F up happened about 45 minutes ago, and I'm currently laying in the bath recovering. I ordered a food delivery from the local supermarket to be delivered this morning. I work from home, so it's super convenient. I had a super sucky day yesterday, so was having a slow morning. It got to 10 a.m. and I was still in my dressing gown, with no belt nothing underneath. Hair unwashed and awful and mascara down my face. I get a knock at the door and think it's the postman, only to see that it's my food delivery. I'm annoyed at myself as I completely forgot. Usually I'd be ready and dressed and have shut the cats in another room. They're currently indoor, but trying to escape. This is where the first thing goes wrong. I go to take the first tray from the driver. We get the food delivered in big basket trays. You take them into your house and unload them, then go give the trays back. As I take it, my dressing gown swings open and I am fully naked underneath. I panic and turn around quickly apologizing, but from the red glow emanating from his face, he clearly saw everything. I run to the kitchen and dump out the shopping, grab a scarf from my coat rack and tie that around my waist, making me look ridiculous, but at least covered. 
He's now bringing the other two trays to the door. I pick up the second. As I'm walking to the kitchen, one of my cats makes a run for the open front door. She's recently rescued and not allowed out quite yet, so I panic and try to block her way with my foot. At this point, my lower back completely gives way, and I collapse to the floor in pain, covering myself, my cat, and everything in the groceries, including a jar of cornicons that smashes. I'm now on the floor and can't move, covered in pickle juice, already looking a state, and I have a very angry cat next to me. I'm so stuck, I have to call to the delivery guy who has to come into my house and help me up, at which point I'm almost in tears from the pain. My, <laughs> my other cat has now appeared and is trying to lick up the pickle juice, so he's also trying to move her away at the same time. He helps me into the living room and brings the next tray of food in for me and starts to empty it on the sofa as I'm half laying, half sitting on the floor next to it. I then realize how awful my living room looks. As I said, I had an awful day the night before and had consoled myself badly by finishing a bottle of wine and then moving on to some gin. Both of which bottles are still on the living room table with the gin lid off as I hadn't cleaned up yet. You'd think that'd be it and I've already disgraced myself enough looking like an unemployed alcoholic with no personal hygiene and half in tears, but oh no. My newer cat decides it's time to come hurtling back down the stairs and straight out the front door, which the delivery driver let swing open again when he rushed in to pick me up. So now I'm unable to move and now actively sobbing as I'm in a lot of pain and I'm panicking she'll run off. Between sobs, I ask if he could possibly try and catch her as I can't move and she's old and scared. Luckily, he's a hero who manages to wrestle her back in, which is no easy feat, as she's over a stone and very bitey and hissing. He practically yeets her inside and runs back to the safety of his little van without a look back. It took me 20 minutes to get up and hobble upstairs to get in the bath, and then another 20 minutes to lower myself in. And to cap it off, I'm now in the bath and realize I haven't put any shopping away, including the ice cream. <laughs> oh, OP, that was an absolute roller coaster ride from start to finish. Thank you so much. Today I <laughs> Today I effed up by cutting off my girlfriend's nipple. My girlfriend and I are pretty kinky. After you've been in a relationship for over five years, you've done all the vanilla stuff too many times and it's time to ramp it up. We've been experimenting with a lot of things, one of them being wax play. It started pretty normal a couple of months ago. I would tie her up in some way and drip wax all over her and take pictures. This quickly became our favorite thing to do. Usually, we would remove the wax with some kind of wet cloth, but she looked in how to spice up the removal of the wax too. Wiping turned to scratching it off, and that turned to gently peeling it off with a knife. Yes, this is going exactly where you think it's going. I may as well not continue this post. So everything's done. She was on her back this time and I start the removal process, being very careful. This knife isn't too sharp, but sharp enough to cut you if you try hard enough. As I'm gently scraping it off her, she starts laughing saying I'm tickling her and squirming and the knife slips. Now, the whole nipple didn't come off like pepperoni, just the part of the nipple that sticks out. Laughing turned to screaming as I started to quickly put pressure on it while untying her. Several hours later, we were told by the ER doctor that there's nothing they can do. She might not be able to breastfeed from it due to scar tissue little form, but otherwise, everything's fine. My girlfriend has been laugh crying all night now, and I've been severely scarred from ever doing knife play again. Well, OP, that's not the worst outcome, but it's not the breast outcome either. Today I effed up by trying to surprise my girlfriend in the shower. So a month ago, my partner Allie and I decided it would be a great idea to take a holiday before things get too crazy at Christmas time. My best mate, Dan, had been talking for ages about taking a holiday, and so we got together and planned a week up the coast in a little two-bed, one-bath Airbnb overlooking a beach. Dan had only started dating his girlfriend, Lisa, a month prior to the holiday. I'd got the feeling a couple times that she didn't like me, but I had no idea why. So time comes for the holiday. I drive everyone up, we arrive no problems, unpack, make the 30 second walk down to the beach and swim, all good. We go out for a nice dinner and then retreat to the beach house for some quiet drinks and then bed. Holiday is off to a cracking start. Next morning rolls around, I wake up alone in bed. I figure Allie must have gotten up early to take a shower and have breakfast. I make my way out to the living room slash kitchen area and no one is around. I can hear the shower running through the bathroom door. 
I knock on Dan and Lisa's door. No answer, so I peek in and they're gone. Figure they must have decided to go out for a walk along the beach. Feeling a little cheeky, I grab my towel, strip down, and make for the bathroom. The door's unlocked. Sweet. I sneak in, shower curtain is closed, and I can hear a woman humming a tune inside. I drape my towel around the rack, pull back the curtain ready to jump in and surprise Allie, and boom. There's Lisa, with her back to me. Lathering shampoo through her hair, she hears the curtain go and turns to look at me. We just stand there awkwardly for about half a second, which felt like an hour. Suddenly, reality kicks in. I attempt to cover my eyes and privates at the same time. Lisa screams and tries to pull the curtain shut. She slips on shampoo and smacks her head against the soap tray. If she didn't hate me at first, she does now. I had to help her naked and semi-conscious out of the shower, wrap her in a towel, and sort out a nasty lump on her head. Turns out, Dan and Allie had gone to the local cafe to grab us coffees, and Lisa had decided to shower while they were gone. So, yeah, the next five days went really great. Allie wasn't overly impressed about it all, but Dan thought the whole situation was hilarious, despite Lisa's mental scarring. I've avoided making eye contact with or speaking to Lisa ever since. I looked down at the comments, and one guy said it looks like something out of a comedy. Another guy says it looks like something out of Pornhub. So, <laughs> so let me know, is this more of a Pornhub plot or more of a rom-com plot? Today I effed up by telling a lady asking me for money that I didn't speak English in perfect English. So it was late at night and I had to make a stop at the gas station to fill up my car. This lady comes up to me wearing this really baggy hoodie. Judging by appearances, she seemed to be a substance abuser. She says she's pregnant and needs some cash to pay for her motel room. I really wasn't buying it. She didn't look pregnant at all and looked like she had a pillow or something under her sweater. I was really tired and didn't want to deal with her, so my tired brain decided that rather than just saying no, the best thing to do would be to pretend that I was a foreigner and couldn't speak English. So I replied to her saying, sorry, I don't speak English. She gave me a bewildered look and said, oh, okay, but then she realized, hey, but you just said that in perfect English. Realizing I'd made a dumb mistake, I started to panic and said, <laughs> yeah, but that's all the English I know. She lost her cool at this point and started yelling at me for lying and making fun of her. I ended up quickly paying at the pump and quickly drove off with my head down. Today I effed up by roasting a coworker going through a divorce. It's mostly men where I work, so naturally there's always some casual, lighthearted roasting going on. Everybody does it and it's all in good fun. Builds morale, so on and so on. One of my coworkers was always an average looking guy, not ugly or unattractive, but until recently had a bit of a dad bod. His wife, however, was very pretty. I noticed this morning that he'd lost some weight and I commented, you're losing weight bro, looking good. Finally you're looking good enough to deserve that pretty wife of yours. Now, it was meant to be a compliment, but he pulled me aside and told me that his wife was leaving him. One of her main reasons was that he apparently let himself go and she decided he wasn't good enough for her. So yeah, I felt pretty awful and I talked it over with him and we're good now. I apologize, but man, do I feel like a complete butthole. I guess we never know what people are going through. Then we have a similar story from Iron Annie in the comments. Since we're sharing foot in your mouth stories, here's a cringer. In high school, my friend's mom died of cancer. He was about 14, let's call him friend A. About a week after the funeral, which our choir performed at, I was with friend B and we saw friend A looking like he'd been crying, walking down to football practice. I asked how he was doing. He said terrible and he wished he could go home. Friend B said, just go home then, F it, in a cheerful voice. He replied dejectedly, I can't, I have practice. Friend B enthusiastically said, just tell them your mom died or something. My mouth fell open. He looked at her with the coldest, most empty look I've ever seen and replied, she's already dead, and walked away. I was mortified. Friend B was even in our choir. She was at the funeral and she should have known better. 11 years later and I'm still cringing. Unless friend B is a psychopath, I bet that comment has kept friend B up night after night many times throughout her life. That was r slash today I effed up, and if you like this video, then please let me know by hitting that like button because it really helps my channel grow.